My name is Craig Sheridan. I'm a skills development coach for Gavin Hahn Music and the uh, senior music technology trainer at Amp Studio. Um, I'm joined by Sean McDonald, um, who's Hello. manager at RadioYMP.com. Um, and together we engineer a mix of recording sessions that happen here at Amp Studio. Um, so this podcast is for us to get a catch up to see what we've been working on, to talk about new technique, to talk about plugins, and everyone to share information. You're very welcome to join us. Um, so Sean, we'll jump straight in this month. Um, what's been inspiring you? Let's start off on a good note. What's been inspiring me is been has been the ability to, you know, release music again. Um and um well I'm isolating at the minute and haven't been able to get out and about and the and on the downside, not to be a downer in the inspiring section, but um with live music being cancelled, I haven't been able to gig, which has been getting me down. But um being able to work on new music and having um new releases for my projects uh coming up has been the thing that's been pushing me on really yes 100 percent um i'm working with a client at the minute actually um with given hands and he was supposed to go and do a, a retreat in ibiza um and to go there he was going to go with demos um we just said i think we spoke about this in the last podcast that we were going to wrap that up within six weeks as if he was going to be a anyway um and the progress that he's been making on that has been phenomenal um, so we got some tracks back from Master and they had a bit of a master and shootout to see which master and engineer he prefers. Um, and things are very productive and moving forward. Um, and so Sunday there we had um, a, a mix three session and I think one more session is going to have him finished on the EP. So it's very exciting to see people move on that way. Um, and we're also actually just about to start delivering new training. So um, as part of a, of a kind of COVID response, uh, we decided that we we're going to cut off all the actual studio fees and only charge the admin fee. Um, of 36 quid to private individuals who have lost work or lost income because of COVID at circumstances that none of us can avoid. So that filled up very quickly. Um, of course, we can only accommodate four people at a time, uh, but there's that course and then we're running the second course in November because the demand was so high. Um, by the time this goes out, the second course in November may also be booked out, mind you. So if you are interested yeah. in getting um, uh, involved, it's going to be a, a level two music production, which is a unit called Composition. It's an OCM credit, of course, um, and that's delivered on site here at Am Studio. Um, so it's been very exciting just the thought of being able to talk to other humans and be able to work with them and show some skills and, yeah. and see people learn in person. It's very exciting and, for me. And it has been so popular so far, them places have filled up so quick. Yes. And um, and I think everybody has been really thankful of the, you know, the fact that it is a reduced rate because so many people are missing out on work mm-hmm. and, uh, and want to use this time to at least, you know, upskill and um and improve themselves with so i think it's a fantastic project well so looking i i mean for for us like anytime if you're not out i mean if you're not performing you're practicing generally anyway whenever you're doing this any kind of long term or even a, it becomes as you well know um music making or being involved in music becomes a lifestyle more than just a, a hobby or an activity so it's not that you just this is something that you enjoy doing it's something that you kind of actively wake up and see how the rest of your day is going to fit around it so um mm-hmm. for us it's like well that's upskill let's give people something to do so if there is downtime at least they're pleasantly distracted from all the the doom and gloom it's not about social media and actively doing something that's, that's building um so that puts us in a lovely place because we can offer something on that, that um yeah so and, and uh, i suppose yeah, that, that brings on the you know what what I've been working on and what and yeah. you'd been saying about um that client you client you had been working with. Yep. Um, any other projects you have on the go at the minute? Um, there. Uh, well, the the DJM thing is a is an up and down um circumstance uh, every day more or less. So sometimes yeah. you send a message and you'll not hear nothing back. The next day you'll get a message saying you know you've missed a call. That, that someone wants to kind of run entertainment. I think half of the time I just stand up with the most recent government updates on how we're supposed to behave and socialize is like a part-time job in itself. So um, yeah. I have been burying my head on work as I tend to do in these circumstances where there's uncertainty and just realizing that the only actual thing that's that's constant in all the, the social circumstances that change is actually you yourself because everything else I'd say that you can't mm-hmm. control, you can't um, you have no influence on. So the only thing I've been really trying to focus on is well what do we do in this circumstance? And I put a post up on Facebook recently that says, well, all we can really do is adapt and create and continue. And that's the only three actions that we can take. So I've been continuing to develop um, song ideas and continuing to develop coaching strategies and looking into new ways to reach more people. And I'm actually starting to get contacted by more people uh, randomly cold contacted um, than before, which is very encouraging. 
um, um, it's just about managing that time and managing those people so they feel that they're getting um, as much of my attention as I can possibly give them. Um, so things are looking positive, I suppose, in, in ways that, you, you know, there's work on, there's projects to get involved in, there's things to be doing. Um, but at the same time, I have a lot of empathy for people who are left in that wilderness of not quite knowing what to do or where to go, especially as we approach the Christmas months. Yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, the things that I've been working on, uh, personally, with uh, two of the, uh, the bands I play with, I have uh, two new singles on the way. So I've got, uh, I've been working away trying to get mixes done for them. Um, and I've also been making a few wee demos. But then in terms of just um, my development and stuff, I've been sitting trying to work on different techniques and trying to, um, you know, uh, look at areas that I maybe haven't touched on as much um, yeah. in my sort of production mm-hmm. s- skill set and trying to improve them. And one of them has been um, sort of like pitch correction and... Mm-hmm. Um, and auto tune that whole sort of world of mm. pitch correction, um, because um, might it mightn't be a massive tool in the you know in the world of rock and um, and stuff like that. You know, a, a lot of clients, you know, that we do work with, well, not as much, but you know, it's becoming more of an effect. It's becoming more of oh, yeah. um, of place. a useful tool now. So, and uh, there, there's definitely a skill in you know in getting that right mm-hmm. and um, and using those tools properly. It's not a matter of pressing a button and, and <laughs> sticking it on. So, yeah. um, do you remember the uh, TPN effect? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So it's it or the share. Um, <laughs> there used to be an so actual yeah, actual like, you talk through and it would make your voice sound like TPN. Yeah, and even like that's another thing. I have I've been sitting trying to work out vocoders a bit better, um, recently and stuff now because I think um focal effects are definitely, you know, coming into the fore again. You know, if you if you think of like the Bruno Mars track a couple of years ago and um and stuff on the weekends new album and that you know there's there's lots of um that I don't know there seems they seem to be in right now so I, I, that was something that I, I wanted to focus on and try and uh, get down for work on my future clients well you make a great point you can't be experimenting with clients or you, you have to bring those skills mm-hmm. with you to the session um, and I think that's a fantastic idea to be highlighting areas that you can develop I remember once um, I can't remember what the video was but I was watching a video about plugins and band plugins and you know what, even though we've got 10 compressors we'll buy another one um, and someone had suggested before you buy a new plugin, and I think this is fantastic advice. Um, look at what the gaps you have, like what what uh-huh. job or what problem do you need to solve that you don't have a tool for, and get that tool and learn that tool instead of buying you know another compressor plugin for Toxic. Um, but that one of those things, that in fact, was was working with vocals and even auto tuning. Um, we have accessed a couple of different styles of pitch correction for voices, but they all work differently and they all give different results. Mm-hmm. And one of the, the hardest lessons I had to learn was one time I had pitched um, I autocorrected, not autocorrect, sorry. Um, uh, I had pitched a line using, what do you call that software with the blobs, always blobs, Maladine. Maladine, um, yeah. Yes, I got Maladine, got this, um, this girl's voice to see to perfectly on pitch and then when I took a break and came back to it, realized that that's not how that person sounds. And that person naturally sits a bit sharp off the note. And if we flatten mm-hmm. that, then they never sing like that. And I was going to run in circles with, with just trying to get that, even to reach that conclusion. So I couldn't have done that with the client there. This was a practice session that was learning just to use the technology, but it became really important to me after a break. And sometimes in the middle of trying to work it out, you're so focused on the outcome that you forget kind of where that sits in the context of things too. So Absolutely. there is a big discipline to learn on those things independently before you even try and apply them. And I suppose it's different if you're mixing than if you're in a writing session, because if you're in a writing session, you kind of want to set that stuff up as almost like a preset set in itself, where you know you can then put uh-huh. a demo track and you can um, play with the vocoder to see what you can come up with without having to go through all the logistics of setting it up during the session. Yeah, because in, in a lot of, um, you know, a lot of artists will come in and that is their go-to sort of sound that like they have a characteristic sound so like uh, and they want that from the get-go and they want that while they're either tracking or while they're listening back to the the playback of their take to see how it's going to turn out so you need to be quick on your feet with with those type of effects um the hip-hop and on b-word or mad for it 
Um, oh, yeah. They, to coin an empty term for Oasis. Um, but they, uh, I, I remember having a session one time before, and that was the guy who goes, hey, this is how I perform. I perform into this. I perform from that, and I fade off that. So that was something that we had to set up. Um, not the most straightforward thing to do in, in Pro Tools, but it happened anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but that, that's good. It's good to have something um, positive, some sort of skill development that we come up on during this time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, obviously, I've been kind of putting together the, the, the composition training in the Tottenham. Um, tomorrow it starts, which well, this is recorded on Monday and it's starting on Tuesday. Um, and uh, it's nice just to refresh that stuff again. And just like being at a studio when you're out of training for a while, it's always nice to have a refresher too. So it was good to go through those those handouts and that organization and just get an idea of where we're going to be. And I'm quite excited about navigating people through that. So that's going to happen on site. And the next one's going to happen on site too, as long as there's no crazy big lockdown that's going to keep us housebound. That's all right. So you've been working on some releases. Is that with I or is that with Snow Patrol? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Hello. Exclusive cola. Me, <laughs> me, me and Gary in the studio. Um, uh, Gary Taper. It's 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 with um with both. Uh, I've been um I've got a release with I coming out called Stronger Than Love, right? And um there's uh, a a single coming out with Search Party as well called Seminal. So uh, looking forward to releasing both of them. Um, was in trying to um. Well, last week there, we were trying to put together a wee video for the search party tune, right? Um, and then that's when all the madness started. With um, I'm isolating at the minute, and that's right. I don't know whether it was from being around them guys or well, like they had family members test positive and stuff, oh, and okay. um, but a whole big hoo ha after after last week. Um, so uh, at the minute, I'm having to work from home, yep. uh, for, for the next two weeks. Well, that, that's maybe one of the things that we'll talk about then for the next question. Now, what are you overcoming? Um, being removed from that, I mean, when we come back into the studio, the first thing that we do is spend the first two weeks making sure that anything that we needed to get access to could be available online again if we were in lockdown, if we had to work from home. Mm-hmm. How are you managing that working from home scenario? Yeah, well, in terms of the radio station, um, it was a real, uh, you know, kick in the backside because... Uh, we had just sort of got into the rhythm of letting the young people back in to the studio to record their their shows and mm-hmm. and to start taking part in training again. And um, and now with me being off for two weeks, yes, they could come in, but uh, and and work with some of the other workers there. But um, it's you know for some of them it's their first time. For some of them they're only sort of starting to get back into it and they need reintroduced the all the equipment. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really work. So I've had to cancel a lot of sessions and um and move a lot of stuff online but but mostly cancel. So it I would I don't know if I have overcame the challenge but um but in terms of just general work I've, I've sort of been um you know all the admin type stuff been just sitting work working away at that at home. Um, like it was during lockdown, but um, it has been challenging, you know, those sessions with the young people. Yep, um, I think what what's especially challenging at the minute is is even like you having to go into isolation. It's the the lockdown measures and not knowing from one week to the next. What mm-hmm. what? How do we move forward? What do we do? What are we adapting to? And it is very mentally fatiguing. Um, in a working scenario, but also just. Being a person scenario, just oh yeah, <laughs> do I get to see my friends, my family? Do I get to, like what? What are we doing here? What's the my legal obligations? How do we keep people safe? There's a lot that that's going on mentally. That um, sometimes I find that the songwriting, the music bit, is actually very therapeutic with because it helps me kind of channel all that energy into something that's that's more positive. And at the end of that time, my mind's been taken off the trying to work out what to do. In a much more simplistic way, I can realize well if I can write some music or I can channel this energy, it's cathartic for me in that way. It's at least a yeah. very interesting distraction, at least. Um, oh, absolutely. Like I, I've I've tried to set myself a goal of, um, you know, how much time I want to set myself to actually, you know, practicing, mm-hmm. like whether it's guitar, um, running for a set, you know, working out like the effects on the pedal board or. Um, how much time I'm spending producing, mm-hmm. um, mixing and stuff. So I, I, I set wee reminders on my phone. You yep. know, if if I say to myself or they're not there, I, you know, I want to, you know, take take for example the the 
auto tune stuff and the pitch mm-hmm. correction. I knew if, like last week I was like, oh, I want to sit and give a good whack at this and practice this. So I just set myself up a project and was mm-hmm. just recorded a load of vocal takes and was just messing around with it, seeing when it worked and um and watched a load of demos and, and read a lot of stuff up on it and I, and I set myself that time to, to make sure each day I was spending half an hour doing such and yep. such or, and and you know it it needed a bit of perseverance to do it because I just went I don't need to do this mm-hmm. but by doing it I definitely felt a lot better there's a so lot we say about it. daily routines you're absolutely right um and I think you touched on a really good topic there and it's about your minimum minimal commitment to something so like so doing something for five minutes every day is better than doing something for 25 minutes once a week. Absolutely. You know, so like even that that daily routine of things and that familiarity and that process and that system. And um, I think it's also like, it's how we learn too. It's repetition. It's, you know, going over the same thing again and again and again until you don't have to think about it. You can embody it that way. And I think that's a, a really good tip no matter what, that for any skill development, that um, even a small bit every day makes a significant difference in the long run. I suppose it's practice, isn't it? Like, Mm-hmm. On the guitar or keyboard and, and play on until you have muscle memory um, or, or overcoming the muscle memory my hands always go to the same chords every time I start it takes me about 10 minutes to exercise that out yeah um, here's a question Craig from left field um, yes. just is there any um, any songs that have been released recently or just at all a song just recently you've been listening to and has inspired you in terms of its production? Well, actually, two songs on Saturday night. Um, I was gigging out and obviously wrapped up at half ten and my wife's family are from one point. So um, they are our bubble. Um, my family are from Belfast and they live on the other side of Belfast. Yeah. Her family are from one point. So they're the only ones that we actually see. The ones in Belfast are far too close. We never want to see them, John. <laughs> um, so we go back and forth between um, Warren Point and Belfast, which is a big win for us too because it gets us out of the city. Um, but it allows us then at that wee bit of space. So I'm driving down after the gig on Saturday night um, to Warren Point, which gave me a good 45 minutes then on the car. And obviously you drive down through the, the country and you get different radio reception that depending on where you go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had DJ Spoonie playing on Radio 2 um, for a while and he was playing all this kind of um, 80s funk stuff and B-sides and album tracks that, of artists that I knew of but never knew this song existed. So although I didn't get the name of the tracks as I was listening to them, there were some fantastic music ideas and some fantastic synth sounds and stuff going on that I just I haven't even got a chance to look back at the playlist. Um, and then after that, Mr. Spring come on. Um, is it two, RTE2? 2FM? Two, two uh-huh. um, and he was playing so much more... Um, kind of 170 to 180 kind of drum and bass hybrid stuff and then into some tack trance stuff and it was just like driving down here after playing a, a set and I'm hearing stuff that I wouldn't necessarily play but was absolutely phenomenal and I had no way to check what the name of the tracks were no. um, but it was a very lovely experience and I got this also um, when I went to university one time I got locked out um, forgot my keys got all the way to Korean forgot my house keys and I ended up the only person who was on um, anywhere near where I was then there's a fellow called David Campbell who runs the drum and bass parties down in Banger, the Crawley DB mm-hmm. stuff. And I only met him about two weeks prior. And he was the only person around. And I was like, listen, I'm locked out. Is there, can I come around to your house for a way? And he says, oh, I've got the deck set up. We'll play, we'll play a few tunes. And I just sat and listened to all this really deep and lovely, jazzy, spacey, ambient drum and bass stuff that he was playing me. And my yes. mind was totally blown. And it was that similar kind of experience where the music was of such a high quality that that's my favorite way to experience music that way. When you hear it for the first time, you instantly get it. And it's so good. You can just appreciate yeah. it straight away. Um, and I don't know if that answers your question, Annie Sean, but it's certainly... Oh, yeah, big time, it. big time. That was a great answer. Right. Um, my, my one's a bit more um, predictable on the nose, but that just... Um, recently, Royal Blood released um, a track. Uh, and I know in the studio, we're big fans of Royal Blood, but... So I see this um, new one, the release called Troubles coming in the last few weeks. And um, and just the first time I heard it there, there, if you listen to it, there's the whole way through the track, you know, everything is really heavily gated. Right. Um, so and kind of you'll and hear it straight away. Everything just stops. Every, you know, push and stop that mm-hmm. they do, it just, everything cuts out. But yep. it gives the song this real, like, Earth punchiness. Yeah. Oh my god, it's crazy, but it, it's way over the top. Um, but you can tell it's very deliberate. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it, um, it just that there, you know, hearing that, I wouldn't have fought the use a gate so aggressively, and just that right. made me think, oh, that's definitely an avenue you, you know you could explore there. Right. You see, well, that's interesting because I often, whenever I'm talking to people about harder forms of rock and metal, I always draw the comparison between that and techno because they're both kind of angry, aggressive music, but they also mm-hmm. have very short, short attack of attacking because of sounds. And that's everything from the bass lines or, uh, and the tempo. Mm-hmm. And the tempo doesn't allow for long, sustained sounds. Um, so anytime there is any kind of ambience or screaming or, or sustained, it's kind of squished really thick and it's just stagnant while all this other percussion's happening around it, and it's such a driving thing. Um, but that's something that, um, one of my techniques for making things more aggressive, make the sounds shorter, and therefore things come on and off, and there's gaps in between. Yeah. Um, it's also very good if you know if, if you have um, recorded something in a space, and the space doesn't sound great, and you can cut that out, and then um, the gate allows you to cut out the background noise, and you can yeah. make that on a facial reverb to set it better in a mix. Um, but it's an interesting use of dynamics control, some gates actually allow you to side chain also. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Yeah, um, yeah. But like in the old school trance sounds, you may have heard those um, sustained kind of uh, vocal sounds that kind of, mm-hmm. uh, and then they would gate that off the hi-hat so it would open and close according to a hi-hat pattern. So it would give you something that's like, ah, 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 ah. And you would have this really yeah. rhythmical stuttering going on. Um, and it, it's just interesting that, that that's a very um, functional dynamic control cutting out the background noise is being used for extra pump and extra aggression and i think yeah. that's when you realize that you're dealing with someone who knows a bit more than standard that's master technique isn't it that's not just you yeah. that's next level shit <laughs> no it's brilliant no and definitely everybody go listen to troubles coming by oil yeah. blood it's fantastic it <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll put a link on there uh to later on uh so the um i suppose what have you overcome um one of the things I think that, that, that we spoke about this very briefly, it's, it's the lockdown thing. And it's and we spoke briefly during the last lockdown, lockdown about staying creative during lockdown. I think the thought of going into another lockdown towards Halloween here is maybe a wee bit daunting. But I think all we can do as creatives, I think, is um, make a plan, make a, a schedule and keep practicing. You know, So it's like pinching your idea of, okay, I want to, by the end of this three weeks, have acquired this skill or at least an understanding of this skill or at least work out what I don't know about this skill so I can make a plan to get better at those things. And I think that when we're moving forward, it's very important that we do that. One of the big, big things that I've been enjoying this past week, though, is like just circumstances like this where you can actually get to talk to someone else about things that you're specifically interested in and getting better, um, or even just talk to people in general. Um, because sometimes we're, we're working so much and we're taking care of business so much that just remembering that you're a social animal and it is just dead on to have a chat now and again and not just work is very important too and especially for people i think who work in, uh, in the entertainment industry where being social is half a job role um isolation maybe comes up a bit heavier um so yeah. by all means i would suggest um making sure that you've got your internet sorted and making sure that you've got your friends on on speed day and a sign in that time um because sometimes um i made a phone call to a friend on saturday out of the blue and then realized he could be working for all I know and, and there's no way for me to tell this so send the wee message ahead of time saying here I'm free on Saturday if you want to get a lunch or you want to get a drink or you want to get a cup of coffee or even just have a cup of coffee on a video call um, but communication is a big thing I want, I want to push this time um, we're very lucky to have people in next week and we're very lucky to have this kind of setup uh, and I would encourage everyone to try and do that as much as possible yeah, humans absolutely. are better together I think um, so the tech tip I suppose this week uh, we're of course we're running the train and able to live. I think it would make sense for me to do a wee introduction video to able to live for anyone who hasn't used it, and um, we'll cover the kind of basic navigations and then um, give a quick demo on well, what can you do with a software and why is it so um, Moorish, if you can call software Moorish. Um, it's a bit different to your old school DAWs because it, it operates in three different ways. But we'll have a look at that in the video that is coming up very shortly. Is there you are a, you're a logic user, Sean? Is that correct? I am I'm bilingual or <laughs> um yeah mostly mostly logic um but uh a change up every now and then um obviously when tracking in the studio yep. make use of pro tools yeah. um but at home sometimes I've um 
depends on the circumstance. As I said, mostly logic, but sometimes Q-based, sometimes right. reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, logic is uh, the go-to for me. Yes, so these things are, of course, all tools. And the reason we use Pro Tools in the studio um, is because the entire time that I've been here, it has been very dependable. Um, and I think it's only ever crashed on me one time. Um, and that was due to, I think, me putting a USB hard drive in and it didn't know what to do with it, so it just shut down, um, which I learned from. Uh, but in terms of recording, we have the Pro Tools HD system, the 192, so it records. Oh, sorry, I was looking over the monitor at it. Um, <laughs> We, uh, we record everything through that, and there's a buffer on that that means that uh, if your hard drive glitches or if anything happens in the recording, that that has a, a memory buffer that it records all the audio to and then makes it to the drive. So it's very dependable that way. Um, of course, when we're writing electronic music tools like Ableton are a lot more flexible than something that's maybe as rigid and as, as, as recording-focused as Pro Tools. So uh-huh. Ableton allows us to... It's a bit like... like um, like the, the party boy of the doll world, anything going, it's into everything. So we can pull in bits of video or we can pull in samples from other places or um, we can la- uh, sorry, stack everything up in layers and see what works together before we commit up to an arrangement. So it's very flexible. Um, it also deals with MIDI very well and it's very quick and very intuitive. So as a sketch pad, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, and it's a special- I, I definitely, oh, yeah, I would say any anyone looking to, get into electronic music or just sampling or um, working with loops or anything. It's mm-hmm. it's definitely the funnest uh, software to, to get started on. Like, Yeah. Um, it does get a bit of slack about looking grey and looking like a bit of Excel. Um, but <laughs> I think that's not without merit. <laughs> uh, but just uh, our software, uh, or sorry, our tunes going to be based in, in live. Um, and it, it's quite quick. It's quite intuitive. It's a system about how you, you write a song more than just strictly this is kind of um what you have to understand about rhythm and melody all that kind of there's no point teaching you that in the abstract we might as well show you how you put that together in a song so um by the end of the training learners will have completed a song and that song will be wrapped up and on cd um so it's very interesting it's great to see people leave with something instead of just do the training and, and that's it it's good that they've got something and skills to build on um so uh i so for lockdown um i suppose if we're heading towards lockdown it's all about uh, keeping yourself mentally healthy. Um, we can we can still go for walks, I'm sure. I don't know if businesses are going to be locked down. No one knows what's going on yet. Um, but trying to get out of the house, trying to make a plan, trying to socialize with friends, and trying to develop your skills and, and keep on practicing, I think is the big thing that we would encourage. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose, uh, is there anything else that you would want to get in there quickly, Sean? What about Radio NYP? What are we doing? Um, well, uh, we're actually... Uh, just at the minute, it's business as usual, um, apart from me being out of the studio. But um, our young people are still continuing on making their shows. Um, recently, we had um, our YNP Roadshow. So we went right. to all different regions of um, Northern Ireland and called in and um, met up with groups of young people, taught them how to use a radio station and had a bit of a chat with them, played some games. Um that was great fun. We made some cracking shows, and mm-hmm. uh, we were up in the northwest there uh, two weeks ago. Um, we got to interview some of the politicians and stuff up there right. as well. So, um, and then we had loads of content there for Good Relations Week. Um, mm-hmm. We had lots of uh, community workers and and local politicians come in and, and chat about the importance of that. And so, loads of stuff for you to go over and and check out on the Radio YMP website and um and anyone who is looking to to get involved in the station or wants to have a look at um you know media or broadcasting um we're always recruiting for uh, new young people to get involved so uh if you fancy it or anyone you know you think would enjoy it um head over and and send us a wee message on the website Beautiful. and uh you can get involved and we'll put links to that um, underneath in the comments here too. Um, we have also changed podcast hosts. I don't know if I told you this. Um, we're now hosting through uh, Anchor FM. Um, and they keep sending me up this saying that we're on loads of different podcast providers now. Um, uh, and our RSS feed is up and live. We had a bit of an issue there with, with episode three not uploading properly to um, 
the iTunes or Apple Podcasts as it is now. But we're back. All four episodes are up and this one will be going up immediately afterwards. Um, thanks for staying with us to the end. Um, after this, there'll be the, the quick Ableton video. But just a, a quick insight that as long as we are able to, we're still taking studio programs and we're still taking mixed projects. And we're still here for um, development and for training. So if there's anything that you would like to know or any questions you've got, of course, send them into Craig at Amstudio.com. Um, or there's contact details on any of the lists. You can get us through socials, you can get us through the email, or you can make a good old fashioned phone call if you want to talk to a human. Um, but I think that's all for this month. Uh, Sean, thanks very much for being with us today. Um, and we'll thanks, exit sir. out with our Ableton video on your first five minutes inside Ableton. This is the Amp Studio podcast. Thank you very much. Cheerio. This is Craig from Amp Studio. And we're going to have a look at some navigation within Ableton Live today. For now, we're not going to talk too much about how the tracks work. We're going to look at the navigation and we're going to start the very bottom left of the screen in this uh, very useful little icon, um, which allows us to drop out the show and hide view. And you can see that anytime I float over any of these controllers or device or bars or icons, I get an explanation of what that is in the bottom left here. So it's very useful to know if you're ever stuck, uh, you can get right back to what that is. Um, the next thing we're gonna look at then is the dropout uh, at, at the top left. And you can see I can expand um, our, our browser or our library here. And this is where our sounds live. These are the things you're gonna to use to construct a track with. So um, with Enable them then, uh, they come preloaded with a bunch of instrument types and some drum packs, and you're free to create with those absolutely royalty free within your own projects. Also on the top left then, we have the BPM counter and our friend, the metronome. Now, if I was to hit play, um, which is the triangle here, you'll hear that nothing's actually happening currently. I'm gonna turn down the headphones because when the metronome starts, it's quite loud. If I hit this, you'll hear instantly that we have the click. And that allows us to keep time. And it's playing at a rate of 120 beats per minute. Now I could drop that rate down, and make it much slower, in this instance 65. Or if I wanted to do a little bit of trance, take it up to one, the 130 region, 140. If I wanted to do some drum and bass, I might take it up to 180. Um, if we then scroll all the way across here, you'll notice that at the top right hand, we have two different buttons that allow us to do, well, to see the information enabled in, in different ways. So we can have vertical scenes, uh, events all play at the same time, or we can arrange them in a much more traditional format from left to right, as you would in any standard DAW. We have bar numbers, bars and beats across the top, which is uh, musical values. And at the bottom, then we have time values. So it's very good to have both of those instantly accessible to see as soon as you uh, open the page. We have MIDI tracks, and we have audio tracks. MIDI tracks deal with uh, information such as note, how many notes are pressed, how hard they're pressed, how long they're held in for, and audio deals with previously recorded sound. So if we have an instrument that we want to perform with, we would insert that virtual instrument onto a MIDI track and play it with a MIDI controller. Or if we have a guitar in the real world, we can connect that in and record the sound that comes from the guitar. On the right, you'll see that there are these huge yellow buttons, which number the channels also that correspond with channel one, channel two, channel three. Uh, that's essentially your channel mute button, so you can turn a channel on and off. Beside that, we have S for solo, and then we have our record enable button. Uh, that's the same for MIDI, to receive MIDI notes or MIDI performances, and then record uh, for audio. But we also have two effects channels, uh, A and B, and A is a reverb, which allows us to put sound in the space, and B is a delay, which makes things repeat. How we use them and in what circumstance we'll cover more as we go through the course, but all six of those channels then filter into our master channel. Finally, we have the device viewer. You'll see that whatever is inserted onto this track can be seen here. Now, we don't have anything inserted at the moment, but if we go to our reverb track, then you can see that the reverb device is in fact inserted into the reverb channel uh, and the delay is inserted on the delay channel. Um, so if we do this as a very quick demonstration, uh, we can grab a, a plugin or a, an instrument. Um, well, let's grab a piano sound and let's go for an electric piano sound. And if I drag that instrument onto the MIDI channel, you'll notice that we now have the ability uh, to play that, let me enable that. So this is on C major seven, and if we double click into that space, it'll reveal what's called the piano roll editor. 
So that's already playing a chord for us. And the longer we hold the note in for, then it's going to play the whole chord. And we can duplicate the trace to that and create a small pattern. We have our electric piano. It's found on these brig boards. We can instantly get a bit of magic happening. All right, and the beat. And of course, change the pitch of these notes. And that's how quickly it is to put something together. So this is Craig Sheridan from Studio. Thanks for staying with us to the end.